For question number one, we need to uh, simplify your answer as much as possible by multiplying. Okay, so for these kind of problems, on the outside you have this GCF, which is 10b to the power of 3 for question number 1, and you just multiply that right through the brackets. So 10 times 5 is going to be 50, and since there's only 1b to the power of 3, the b to the power of 3 just tags along. Okay, and then we multiply uh, this, next we multiply 10 by negative 4, which is going to be negative 40. And then uh, just remember when you have a, a powers here, b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 5, you just add the powers. So 3 plus 5 is going to be 8. Uh, so there's your answer for the very first question. Moving on to the second one here, my GCF now is negative 5v to the power of 6. So we're going to multiply that through. So negative 5 times 2 is going to be negative 10. And then uh, once again, if I look at the powers here, uh, 6 plus 3 is going to be 9. So v to the power of 9. Okay, now let's take a look at this middle term here. If I multiply negative 5 and negative 6, we get positive, positive 30. So 6 times 5 is 30. And then if we take a look at the powers, 6 plus 2 is going to be 8. So v to the power of 8. Okay, and then finally we have one last term here. So we have another negative 5 times a negative 3. So that's going to be positive, right? So negative 5 times negative 3 is going to be positive 15. And then the v to the power of 6 just remains. So there's your answer for the second question. Okay, uh, for the next question here, uh, we, we have another GCF here. So 4 be the 4 times C. Okay, if I multiply number with number, 4 times 6 is going to be 24. Okay, and then we have um, we have more letters now. So B to the 4 and B to the 6. So 4 plus 6 is going to be B to the 10. And then the C just remains. Okay, so that's it for the first term. And then let's take a look at this middle term here. So once again, we want to multiply number and number. So 4 times 3 is going to be 12, so 12. Okay, and then we just add the powers here. So 4 plus 3 is going to be 12, so be the, sorry, 4 plus 3 is going to be 7. Okay, and then uh, now we have C and C squared. So 1 plus 2 is going to be C to the power of 3. So uh, let me just write that a little bit clearer. So C to the power of 3. Okay, so that's your middle term. And then finally, you have a last term here. So negative 4. Sorry, 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. And the b to the power of 4 remains because there's only 1b to the power of 4. And then uh, the last one here is you have 1c and c squared. So 2 plus 1 will be c to the power of 3 again. Uh, so there is your answer for uh, that third question there. Okay, so now we get into uh, some FOIL questions here. So uh, u times u is going to be u to the power of 2. Okay, and then u times uh, 2 is going to be positive 2u. And then we go work the inside now. So we have a negative 4, remember, right? So negative 4 times u is going to be negative 4u. And then finally, uh, last one here, we have negative 4 times positive 2. So that's going to be negative 8. Okay, so last thing we have to do with these FOIL questions is that you need to combine the second and third terms usually. So uh, uh, if I've positive 2u minus 4u, if I combine that, that's going to be negative 2u minus 8. So there's your final answer for that one. Okay, so we have another FOIL question. So x times 8x is going to be 8x squared. x times uh, 3 is going to be positive 3x. And then we work the inside now. So 3 times 8 is going to be positive 24x. And then finally, positive 3 times positive 3 is going to be positive 9. Okay, and then just like the previous question, we combine the, the middle terms here because those are like terms. All right, if we add 3 plus 24, that's going to be 27x and then plus the 9. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, so 7y times y is going to be 7y squared and 7y times negative 5. So remember, we have a negative, sorry, negative 5z. So that's going to be negative 35 and then the yz. And then we have a, a negative z here, so we want to multiply the inside now. So a negative z times y is going to be negative yz. And then finally, the last one here, we have a, we're going to multiply yellow and green. So negative z times negative 5z, well, it's going to be positive, so plus, and then 5, and then z times z is going to be z squared. Okay, so a lot of different variables in that particular question there. So uh, uh, to kind of finish off, we want to simplify that middle term there. So I have a 7y squared. So negative 35 minus, um, so there's an invisible 1 here, right? So negative 35 minus 1 is going to be negative 36. And the variables remain the same, yz. And then we have the positive uh, 5z squared at the end. 
Okay, so that's that particular question there. Okay, moving on to the next one here. Uh, so uh, I guess since there's a plus and a minus here, there's a difference in squares, but let's just go ahead and do this the long way here by foiling. So 4D times 4D is gonna be 16D to the power two, and then 4D times positive nine is gonna be positive 36D. And then uh, for difference of squares, uh, remember there's a negative nine there. So if you multiply with that with the negative 4D, we get negative 36D. And negative nine times positive nine is gonna be negative 81. And for difference of square problems, uh, usually the second and third terms cancel off. So you're left with 16D squared minus 81 as a final answer there. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, if I have a power of two here, uh, you can expand this as two plus seven U times two plus seven U. Okay, and then we can just complete the FOIL steps, right? So two times two is gonna be four. Two times seven is gonna be 14, so 14 U. And it turns out that the inside is also gonna be positive 14 U. And seven U times seven U is gonna be uh, 49 U squared. Okay, uh, if I combine the second and third terms, we get 14 plus, so 14 plus 14 is gonna be 28, right? So 28U and then plus the uh, 49U squared. All right, so there's other ways you can do uh, um, this kind of foiling problem a bit faster, but we'll just apply the traditional foil technique here. Okay, uh, back to another question where we have a GCF on the outside here. So we gotta distribute this through the brackets. So uh, let's just see if we can do this all in one step here. So uh, negative eight times negative four is gonna be positive 32. And then we combine the powers, so four plus three is gonna be seven. Okay, and now we're moving on to the middle term here. So uh, negative eight times nine is gonna be negative 72. And then uh, x to the power four times x to the power two, so four plus two is gonna be six. Okay, and then finally we have one last term here. If I multiply that out, I get a positive, right? So eight times three, negative times negative is positive, so eight times three is 24, and then four plus one will be x to the power of five. Okay, so that's it for uh, that particular question there. Okay, another FOIL question here. So uh, w times w is w squared. w times negative six is negative six w. Now, if we do the inside here, three times w is plus three w, and three times uh, negative six is negative uh, 18. Okay, if I combine the terms here, um, I got negative six plus three, so that's gonna be negative three W and then minus the 18. Okay, so that's it for uh, that particular question as well. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, so another FOIL question here, so a negative five A, okay, sorry, five, positive five A, so five A times six A is gonna be 30 A squared. And then I have uh, this 5a times this negative one is gonna be a negative 5a. Okay, and then now we have to uh, take on the inside here. So, uh, so negative four times 6a is gonna be a negative 24a. And, uh, and then we have uh, uh, negative four times negative one is gonna be positive four. Good. All right, so after that, we wanna com combine like terms again. So uh, it's usually the second and third terms here. So now I have a 30 a squared, and then we have a minus 29a, and then we have a positive four at the very end there. So uh, there you go, there's the final answer for that one there. Okay, and now we just continue to work on some more FOIL questions with different variables here. So five x times eight x is gonna be 40. Five times eight is 40, and x times x is x squared. Okay, and then we do by five x times the eight uh, x, so five times negative w is gonna be negative 15. Uh, wx and we have that times this is gonna be a negative 16 so negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 and then the wx tags along okay and then finally we have negative 2w and negative 3w so if I multiply those two terms a negative times negative is gonna be positive right so positive 6 and w times w is w to the power of 2 okay and then we're gonna combine our second and third terms so a final answer is 40 x squared and negative 15 minus 16 is gonna be negative 31 w x and then plus the six w squared. Okay, so that's it for that one there. 
Okay, so uh, for this one here, I noticed that we have a difference of squares because there's a plus and a minus and the last two terms are the same. So if you recognize that this is a difference of squares, you're essentially multiplying the first term, which is w times w, which is u squared. And the last term is eight times negative eight, which is negative 64. So the second and third terms just essentially cancel out when you have a difference of squares uh, FOIL problem there. All right, and then we have u plus six to the power two. Uh, this is one of those perfect square trinomials. I'll do this in a slightly different way instead of foiling it, but uh, the way I, I like to do some of these kind of problems is uh, if u plus 6 to the power 2, you take your first term, which is u, and you square it, right? So uh, u times u is u squared, okay? And after that, you want to take u and the 6, and you multiply that, which is 6u, and then you double that. So 6u times 2 is going to be plus 12u. Okay, and finally the last one is you take your six and you square it. So six times six is 36. So this is called the square double square technique. So square double square technique. So I'll say square, double, and then square. Okay, so how do you square this? So u, so u squared, so u times u is u squared. For the doubling technique, you first multiply that, which is six u, and then you double that, which is 12 u. And then finally, the last part is you just square the 36. So, sorry, so you square the 6, which is 6 times 6, which is 36. All right, so those are some other ways you can kind of expand that out or just stick to the traditional FOIL method. Okay, now let's get into these factoring questions. Uh, these factoring questions are a bit tricky because you need to identify what method to use. Uh, for the very first question, I see two terms with a positive sign in the middle, so uh, I will look for a GCF. So the maximum number of n variables that I can remove here is just 1. So n is on the outside, right? That's my GCF. And then mathematically, you're, you're just dividing everything by your GCF, which is n, right? So uh, 15n squared divided by n is 15n plus 14n divided by n is just 14. So there is your uh, final answer for that particular question. And you can always check your answer by taking your GCF, which is N, and just distributing through just like the previous math questions. Okay, so now I have three terms, right? So we have three terms, right? So you might think about uh, trinomial factoring for these kind of problems. So for this particular question, for if you have three terms, always look at the last number here. I need two numbers that multiply to 49, and those two numbers need to combine to negative 14. So usually students think of like seven and seven, and since I need a negative 14, you just put a negative 7 there and a negative 7 there because negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49, and negative 7, time, negative 7 minus 7 is negative 14. So from there, you just set up your two brackets, and usually you have uh, an x, uh, you will have a u in front and a u in front. And the reason is for that is because u times u is u squared. All right, so that's what you have to use in front. And then you just take your negative seven and your negative seven. So u minus seven and u minus seven. And there you go. So that's how you factor a trinomial when you have three terms. Okay, moving on to the next one, I have two terms. And there's a, a minus sign in the middle, right? So this is the difference of squares factoring technique. So there's a minus sign in the middle and two terms. So right away, you can jump to the two brackets. And then there's a plus and a minus sign in the middle. And a lot of times students just take the square root of these. So u squared is going to be, the square root of u squared is u, so there's a u there. And the square root of 4 is going to be 2. And then you just copy the same answers to the next bracket. All right, so u plus 2 and u minus 2. This one here, once again, I have two terms. And there's a minus sign in the middle, right? Okay, so this is difference of squares factoring, so I need two brackets. There's my minus sign in the middle. Uh, there's a, a plus and a minus, all right? And now you're seeing the square root. What's the, so what's the square root of 36v squared? Well, that's gonna be 6v. And then if, that, if that's a 6v, this is a 6v. And then the square root of 25 is just five. So five there and a five there. Okay, we on to the next one. I have two terms and there's a minus sign in the middle again. So this is a difference of squares factoring, right? So there's two terms and a minus sign in the middle. And you're just taking the square root of these. So v, so there's a plus and a minus. So v, the square root of v squared is v and the square root of nine is gonna be three. So v plus three and v minus three. And then we're done. Uh, this one, we have three terms, right? 
So this is a trinomial factoring. So we need to take a look at the last term here and the coefficient in the middle there. So 16 and 8. I need two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 8. Okay, the two numbers are probably, um, that probably will work are, are 4 and 4. So 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 plus 4 is equal to 8, which matches the middle term, right? So uh, let's do our two brackets. And then if, if I have a u squared, what that means is there's a u at the start and a u at the start of this bracket. And then we just take our two numbers here, positive 4 and positive 4. So u plus 4 and u plus 4. Now this is the right answer. I'll mark that right. But uh, if you want to combine this as u, to the power f u plus 4 to the power of 2, all in brackets there, that's also an equivalent answer there. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, okay, I have two terms here. Um, and there's a minus sign in the middle. But the problem is uh, you can't take the square root of 6, right? So what you want to do is you want to look at 6b and 4b cubed, and you want to look for the GCF. And the GCF here uh, is going to be 2b, all right? So um, 2 is the biggest number that divides into 6 and 4, right? And then if I look at the b's, you will, we always take the smaller b, which is just a single b there, right? So 2b... Uh, is my GCF okay and then we're gonna divide this by 2b and divide that by 2b so we want to set up the brackets first so 6b divided by 2b is gonna be 4b sorry uh, 3b 3 so the b's just cancel off and 4b cubed divided by 2b is gonna be pause uh, is gonna be negative uh, 2b squared and uh, I think with that, that's about it. This is just a GCF kind of factoring question there, right? So um, you can check your answer by just distributing, distributing the brackets there, but uh, we can't actually break the inside brackets anymore. So that should be your final answer there. So once again, for a particular question like this, so we looked at the six and the four, and we found the biggest number that divides six and four at the same time, which is two. And then we take a look at the variables, and we always take the smaller variable, which is b, right? So b is the maximum number of b's that you can remove from b and b to the power 3. After that, we're setting up the brackets here. And what goes in the brackets, you're just dividing by your GCF, which is 2b. So you got to find your GCF right away. And um, the b's cancel. 6 divided by 2 is 3 minus 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. b cubed and b is going to be b squared. All right, so a lot of uh, calculations to uh, finish off that question there. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, this one's a little bit nicer because there's two terms and there's a minus sign in the middle and you can definitely take the square root of those terms, right? So two sets of brackets. Let's do a plus and a minus. And the square root of 81 is gonna be nine. So there's a nine there and a nine there. And then uh, if I look at the square root of 49y squared, that's gonna be seven y and seven y. So that's it for that one there. Okay, let's go with some more of these factoring questions here. Now they get a little bit harder here because we have to apply GCF factoring first. There's a five and a 20. Let's move on to the next question here. So for this particular question, there's a lot of numbers and variables. So uh, we need to look for uh, GCF factoring if we can start off this problem. So there's a five and a 20 and the biggest number that divides five and 20 is gonna be a five. Okay, uh, I have u to the power 8 and u to the power 6. So for variables, we always pick the smaller variable. So uh, what's smaller, 8 or 6? So it's going to be 6. So u to the power of 6. And then for v to the 6 and v to the 7, we always look for the uh, smaller power gain. So uh, 6 is smaller than 7. So v to the power of 6. Even though there's a y squared there, there's no y squared over there. So we can't actually factor out a y squared, right? We're looking for the greatest common factors, right? So uh uh, y is excluded from the GCF. Okay, so let's go figure out what's in the brackets there. And all we're doing is we're dividing these two terms by the GCF, which is 5, u to the 6, v to the 6, 5, u to the 6, v to the 6, right? Okay, so 5 divided by 5, they cancel out. And then I have u to the power 8 and u to the power 6, which is going to be u to the power of 2, right? So 8 minus 6 is going to be 2. And I have a v to 6 and a v to 6. That complete cancels off. And then you're left with y squared. So y squared. And then we have a positive sign. Positive. 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4. And then the 6's cancel off. 
and then you have v6 and sorry v7 and v6 so uh, 7 minus 6 is going to be 1 so v to the power 4v to the power of 1 for that question there okay so that should be it for that question just a straight up gcf factoring and uh, that's your final answer there Okay, so move on to uh, the next one here. Uh, so this is a good classic question here because um, sometimes you get questions where you might not be able to factor. So we need two numbers that multiply to 16. So some people are thinking four and four, uh, but those two numbers need to multiply to negative 16, right? So one of these have to be a negative. And uh, if I add four and negative four, we get zero. So we don't get this positive eight. So that doesn't work, right? Uh, sometimes students might think, okay, if that doesn't work, we'll think of a different number. So the only other combination that multiplies to negative 16 is like a 1 and a negative 16, or a negative 1 and positive 16, but uh, that will give you just uh, negative 15, which does not match the middle one, right? So uh, for this one here, you simply can't factor. And we'll move on. Okay, uh, now we have three terms. Um, okay, so we have a 64 here and we have a 16, right? So we need two numbers that multiply to 64 and add, and add to 16. So I'm thinking of eight and eight, right? So eight times eight is 64 and eight plus eight is uh, 16. Now be careful here because we have a V squared and a V there and it's not too hard to uh, just adapt to this particular problem. You just have the two uh, brackets there. Since you have a W squared, we need a W here and a W there, right? And uh, we still use our, our eights and our eights. We have a plus eight and a plus eight, okay? Now, the only thing that, that you have to modify here is when you multiply the eight and the eight, you need 64 V squared, right? So just to adapt, you just need a V there and a V there, and then you're done. And if you foil that out, you'll definitely get this middle term there, right? So uh, that's definitely gonna work out. And uh, since uh, both brackets are the same, uh, if you want, you can also write 8 plus 8v to the power of 2. Uh, this one here, uh, we can't factor. Uh, although there's two terms, there's a plus sign in the middle. This has to be a minus sign, right? Not a positive, so you can't factor that one. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this one you can factor because there's a minus sign in the middle. So we need two sets of brackets, plus and a minus, because this is a difference to squares factoring problem. The square root of 25 is five, the square root of y squared is y, so five plus y and five minus y. Okay, we on to the next one here. Uh, we have uh, two terms and a minus sign in the middle, so two sets of brackets. There's a, a plus sign and a negative sign in the middle. We take the square root of each term, so the square root of 25y squared is five y and the square root of 64 is gonna be eight. So five y plus eight and five y minus eight. And the, and the order doesn't matter, right? So if you wanna write this as five y minus eight and five y plus eight, the order does not matter because I mean three times two is the same thing as two times three, right? The order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. Okay, let's move on. Once again, we have two terms and we have a minus sign in the middle. So two sets of brackets. So plus and a minus sign there, square root of that. So square root of 81 x squared is nine x, and the square root of four y squared is two y. So nine x plus two y and nine x minus two, so nine x plus two y and nine x minus two y. Let's take a look at the next difference of squares problem here. Now for this problem here, I noticed that there's a z squared and z to the power four. So uh, what you probably want to do here is you can factor out the uh, GCF first, which is z to the power two. And if you factor that out, you would get 81 minus nine z to the power of two. Okay, so you do some GCF factoring first. And then it turns out that you could apply the difference of squares factoring technique to the uh, expression in, in the yellow brackets there. So the uh, z squared will, will remain on the outside. And then you can set your two sets of brackets with the uh, plus sign and the negative sign in the middle. And just like all the previous questions, you're just taking the square root of these two terms, right? So uh, the square root of 81 is nine, and the square root of nine z squared is three z. And so it'd be nine plus three z and nine minus three z. And that should be your final answer for that one there. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. So uh, this is probably another difference of squares factoring, but you wanna to look to factor out a GCF first. 
So I have a 32 and a 50. So uh, the biggest number that divides into 32 and 50, uh, it's probably gonna be a, uh, let's use a two here. And then uh, what we're gonna do next is, uh, I noticed that there's a V squared and a V squared, so we're gonna factor that out as well. So two V squared, okay? If I factor that out, um, 32 divided by two is gonna be 16. And then we have a U squared because the U remains minus, and then this 50 divided by this two is gonna be 25. And then this V will V squared will just cancel off. So that's what you get when you factor out the two V squared. So this is called GCF factoring. We did a few of those questions uh, back in problem number in the early stages of this homework video guide. And once you factor out the uh, GCF, which is two V squared, and you can always check by um, distributing two V squared back in the brackets. Uh, but now we can apply the difference of squares uh, factoring technique to this term in yellow, and we need the plus and the minus sign in the middle, and then we just take the square root of this, right? So the square root of 16 u squared is 4 u, and the square root of 25 is 5. So this would be 4 u plus 5 and 4 u minus 5. Okay, so now we're working on some problems where we have to apply some GCF factoring, right? So for the next one, I have a 2, 11, and a 40. Um, I don't think I can factor anything out of there in terms of the numbers, but what about the variables, right? What's the lowest number of Ws we have? Well, it's W to the power of 4. So W to the power of 4 is my GCF. And then we have a 2 W to the power of 2 plus 11 W minus 40. And, uh, and that's about all you can do for that particular question. So that, that's just a straight up GCF factoring question where you're factoring out a W to the power of four. Okay, so we want a next one here. Um, this might be a difference of squares factoring problem again. So uh, I noticed that uh, there's a two there and a two there. So we can factor out the two right away. Uh, there's a Y squared and a Y squared. So we can factor out the Y squared. Uh, so that's my uh, GCF. So if I factor that out, I guess I get um, one minus uh, u to the power of four. Okay, and it turns out that we can factor that using the difference of squares technique. So two sets of brackets. There's a plus sign and a minus sign, and the square root of one is one, and the square root of u squared is u squared. So it'd be one plus u squared and one minus u squared. And then it turns out that here's another difference of squares factoring uh, um, opportunity there. So uh, we can continue to factor the green brackets. So for that one, we need two sets of brackets again because there's two terms and a minus sign in the middle, right? Key term, and there's a minus sign in the middle. And then you just, see the, you just take the square root of these terms again. So there's a plus and a minus. The square root of one is one, and the square root of u squared is u. So one plus u and one minus u. So that's a good question there in terms of um, you know more work to do. Okay, uh, next question here. Uh, I noticed that there's a, a four, a 24, and a 36. So the biggest number that uh, we can pull out of, uh, of, of this uh, trinomial here is uh, in terms of the numbers is gonna be a four. And then I have V4, V cubed, and V squared. So the smallest number of Vs is gonna be V squared. So I'm gonna pull out the uh, four V squared first. And if I do that, I get V to the power two plus six V plus nine. Okay, so once again, uh, if you actually uh, highlight that and distribute that through the brackets, uh, you will definitely get the original question there. And then from here, you need two numbers that multiply to three and add to this middle term of six, right? Because uh, this whole thing is three terms, right? So uh, two numbers that multiply to nine are three and three, and three plus three also gives you the six, right? All right, so in order to finish this question off, it's four V squared, and then we need the two sets of brackets. Since I have a V squared, you need a V there and a V there, and then our numbers are plus three and plus three, right? So V plus three and V plus three. Okay, so there's your final answer for that one. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, last, uh, let's go over the last two questions over here, I believe. Uh, okay, so um, over here I have a three and a three, so let's factor out the three. I have a x squared and an x squared, so that we can factor out the x squared. So there's my GCF. If I factor that, that, that out, I get one minus w to the power of four. Okay, and uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be able to break this down a few more times. So a three x squared. 
So in the, in the green brackets, there's two terms and a minus sign in the middle. So to factor that, we need a difference of squares factoring technique with a plus or the minus. And then we just square root both sides, right? So square root of one is one, square root of w to the four is w squared. And the same thing over here as well. Okay, and it turns out that we can also apply difference of squares factoring there, right? So there's two sets of brackets, plus and a minus sign. And if I take the square root of that, I get one. If I take the square root of that, I get w. So one plus w and one minus w. And then we have the three x squared bracket one plus w squared close the bracket. Okay, so that's the answer for that particular question. And uh, last uh, question for this first part of the homework video, guys. So um, I got a, um, hmm, there's a lot going on over here. So there's a U cubed and a U. So uh, the smallest numbers of U's that we can take out here are just a single U. And then I have a V and a V. So let's factor out the V as well. So the GCF is uh, UV. Okay, so if I factor that out, I get nine U squared minus 16. And uh, this is called your GCF there in yellow, right? So if you distribute that through the brackets, you should get back to your original question, right? Okay, so my GCF will remain UV. And then it turns out that I have two sets of brackets again. And this part here in green, uh, difference of squares factoring because there's two terms and a minus sign in the middle. And then we just take the square root of each side. So 3U plus 4 and 3U minus 4. Okay, so that's it for this uh, first part of this homework video guide.